Have you ever thought about or heard of launching something into orbit by throwing it really, really hard? Somebody did, and that's Spin Launch, a spaceflight tech company working on mass accelerator technology to move payloads to space. This company is pursuing a completely new path compared to the current space industry. Spin Launch, a few years ago, was frequently in the news and considered a highly promising company. But what about now? Today, I'll dive deeper into what we know, some issues they face, what to expect in the future, and more. The traditional method of putting objects into orbit is to place them on a rocket powered by liquid fuel engines. A proven solution, but generally still costly. I have mentioned the rocket equation at least twice in my videos, which shows that up to 90% of the rocket's mass is fuel, leaving only a small portion for useful payload. This results in the cost of launching a satellite reaching tens of millions of dollars per launch. Spin Launch proposes a very different approach based on basic kinetic principles. Instead of relying entirely on the thrust of rocket engines, they use a giant centrifugal accelerator called an orbital accelerator. This device applies a basic physical principle that we have seen in astronaut training to cope with G-forces, rotational energy. Essentially, there is a giant rotating arm in a vacuum chamber capable of accelerating the payload to extremely high speeds. When the desired speed is reached, the payload is launched along a tangential vector through a precisely calculated exit port. Specifically, the tether structure is made of carbon fiber, designed like a lever arm, with a small rocket payload attached at one end and a counterweight at the other, creating a dynamically balanced system. To optimize the launch efficiency, the entire spinning chamber is vacuum sealed to minimize air resistance acting on the system during rotation and to prevent temperature increases due to air friction. The acceleration process takes about 90 minutes, with the rotational speed gradually increasing in a controlled manner. This is a critical phase requiring high precision in control and monitoring to ensure the system maintains stability as it reaches critical speed. The actual launch moment is a sequence of events occurring in less than a millisecond. In that brief moment, three key events happen simultaneously. First, the rocket is released and penetrates a special plastic membrane. This membrane is thin enough for the rocket to pass through, but strong enough to maintain the vacuum environment in the spinning chamber. Immediately after, a special door slams shut at extremely high speed, preventing air from rushing into the spinning chamber, thus maintaining the vacuum conditions for subsequent launches. At the same time, the counterweight is released in a pre-calculated direction, colliding with a special mound of earth and being completely vaporized due to the immense impact energy. After being launched from the accelerator, the payload ascends to an altitude of about 200,000 feet. At this altitude, the air is significantly thinner and the remaining distance to reach low Earth orbit is much shorter. At this point, the mini two-stage rocket is activated, propelling the satellite into its final orbit. Thanks to being lifted to a high altitude and achieving high velocity beforehand, the amount of fuel required is only a fraction of what would be needed for a ground launch. Sounds pretty cool, right? Currently, Spin Launch's test facility is just the beginning. The company plans to scale up the project with a complete orbital accelerator. Compared to the current test device with a diameter of 33 meters, the complete version will reach over 100 meters with the capability to spin at 450 revolutions per minute. At this speed, the centrifugal acceleration can reach over 10,000 times the force of gravity, creating a launch velocity of approximately Mach 7, seven times the speed of sound. With such capacity, the first generation of this kinetic launch system is expected to carry a payload of about 200 kilograms, which is about 150 small satellites into space in just a single launch. If successful, the centrifuge sling launch concept is projected to lower the cost of launches and use less power with the price of a single space launch potentially reduced by a factor of 20 to under 500,000 US dollars. Theoretically, these numbers are very impressive, and Spin Launch has initially demonstrated the feasibility of this technology through some practical tests. According to official information from the company's website, on October 22, 2021, they successfully launched a test vehicle at hypersonic speeds for the first time and recovered the reusable flight vehicle. The company also made ambitious statements about plans to conduct regular test flights throughout 2022 with various types of vehicles at different launch velocities. They emphasized the role of the suborbital launch system as a satellite testing facility, 
promising long-term value for customers. After 10 test flights, many experts and interested parties expected that Spin Launch had gathered enough necessary data from the suborbital version and would begin focusing on developing an actual orbital accelerator. The company even announced that the location for the first orbital launch site was in the final selection stage at a coastal location in the United States although they have not disclosed specific details. Everything sounds very promising. However, Spin Launch has been unusually silent over the past few years. One of the very few updates they had this year was the announcement of David Wren, the former COO, being appointed as the CEO in May. In a Twitter announcement, the company stated, Today, Spin Launch enters a new chapter. We have announced a change of leadership as former COO, David Wren, has been appointed CEO to execute on the company's mission and bring our innovative, low-cost space solutions to market. Notably, they handled the information about the departure of founder Jonathan Yaney very briefly, stating that he had completed the transition and supported Wren's promotion. David Wren, as the new CEO, said, I am energized to lead Spin Launch into this next chapter. With the company's experienced leadership and incredibly talented team, I am confident in our ability to execute on the company's mission and bring our integrated tech stack of low-cost space solutions to market. I look forward to sharing more details about our near- and long-term strategy in the coming months. Since then, the only other real update we got was an announcement from the company that after five years at their headquarters, they moved to the Airway Office Park. As of now, it seems Spin Launch has still not been able to find a location for its orbital launch system. The company had surveyed Unalaska, Alaska in 2020. This is a location at the southernmost point of Alaska, a remote area with a population of only a few thousand people. In September 2020, company representatives visited Unalaska and presented their plans to collaborate with the local community to city officials. Many influential figures in the region, including the Director of Public Utilities and the Director of Public Works of Unalaska, saw the economic development potential that Spin Launch could bring to the area. However, not all feedback was positive. Notably, the port director expressed skepticism about the long-term benefits the project could bring to the community. She raised important questions about job opportunities, housing development, and the impact on the local education system. But Spin Launch was unable to provide satisfactory answers. The relationship between the company and the city government seemed to start deteriorating in 2021. By mid-2023, Spin Launch shifted its focus to surveying Western Australia, evaluating two areas as potential launch sites for their orbital accelerator. However, like previous efforts, this location also did not seem to come to fruition, as no further updates have been announced since then. Do you think with this new launch solution and the current situation, the company is doing well? The contract with NASA in April 2022 was once considered a significant breakthrough for Spin Launch. This test demonstrated the ability to carry payloads from reputable partners such as NASA, Airbus US, Cornell Engineering's Space Systems Design Studio, and Outpost. The test results showed that the payloads followed the expected trajectory and were well preserved after the flight, which can be seen as proof of the feasibility of this technology. However, what is concerning is that after this successful test, NASA seems to have shown no further interest in Spin Launch's technology. Instead, the U.S. Space Agency is focusing its resources and contracts on traditional liquid fuel launch systems. Additionally, the company is also facing a lack of new investment sources and customers from the private sector. In a rapidly developing industry like space, failing to attract new investment or commercial contracts could mean that the company does not have enough capital to operate and cover R&D costs. This situation raises many questions about the long-term viability of spin launch in the commercial satellite launch market. Whether this technology can work is one thing, but whether the company can survive until it actually puts something into orbit is another. No one knows what is going on inside this company. We can only hope that the organizational restructuring in the middle of last year is a good sign. However, it must be acknowledged that Spin Launch has a very unique approach to space and has many advantages. If you want me to analyze the technical aspects behind it, please comment below.